Hello everyone, welcome back to OCD Recovery. This is the last installment of all the different quotes from the books. So I combined it the Albert Ellis, because there's two Albert Ellis books on the reading list, so I combined it 10 quotes from that. Then we have Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Those quotes are a little bit more correlated to just changing your perspective on the OCD recovery journey and showing yourself what you can actually handle, and it's a lot more than you think you can. It just takes some time to see that and build that perspective. And then I did Claire Weeks, which really result, uh, correlated with the physical manifestations of anxiety. And the last one, I picked five quotes from Paul David's At Last a Life. Paul David had more than likely GAD, generalized anxiety disorder, a really bad case for 10 years. The book is amazing because it's from the perspective of a sufferer, what he did, how he got through it, and then basically he put that into paper, and it's a really, really good book. It talks about depersonalization, chronic physical anxiety symptoms. It's like the new version of Claire Weeks' self-help for your nerves. So before I go any further, if you could please subscribe down below. Great videos, as I say, every single time in the beginning of every video. Videos going up every single week. Definitely myself, I've done a lot of videos lately. Kirstie does a lot of videos. Oliver, Brianna's on there, Sadie's on there. There's a lot of people, um, probably a couple I'm forgetting, but it's cool because I like what Kirstie said yesterday in one of her videos. I can't remember what the title of the video was called, but it's nice to hear other people's perspectives because it kind of gives you a different outlook on the journey. So here we go. So these quotes, out of all the quote videos I've done so far, this one was probably the most important to me because this book really stuck with me because a lot of my OCD journey has been a lot of physical, not so much intrusive thoughts or images, but mainly physical manifestations. When I had sensory motor OCD really bad, uh, I've had gag for a little bit, more than a little bit, and it's just, this book really correlates with me. This is why it's important to watch other people and talk about their journeys, because some people really struggle with our OCD, Hannah and Kirstie, you know, harm OCD, uh, existential, solipsism, they're all, it's all OCD, don't let anyone tell you it's not different categories of OCD, these are just terms, but it's just what you're scared of. So, literally this is probably the most important quote out of every single thing I've done so far in all five of these quote videos, or four of them. So you will never get better unless you stop trying. This is key. Now, now what he means by this, he doesn't mean don't work on recovery. And it's also not geared toward obsessive compulsive disorder. But he means that you need to stop trying to get yourself out of how you feel right now. So what are some of the ways that people want to get better right now? Forcing acceptance. A lot of people have talked about that on the, video, on the YouTube channel. Constantly trying to force exposures, which isn't really known too much, except you really, if you really understand OCD, you can know that exposures can, can become compulsive and they actually, so for chronic OCD sufferers that are, that are scared of a fear, absolutely scared, exposures more than likely will only get you so far. There are definitely people that recover fully from ERP and go along their way, but all the moderators I'm friends with, including myself, ERP was not enough to get, I, like for some sensory motor, ERP for most people probably won't get underneath it because you're already experiencing the sensation all day long. You have to address the fear of, of being discomfort, like potentially being uncomfortable for life. Like that's your key fear right there, right? It ruining every single event, the fear of you being stuck forever, the fear of you relapsing when it goes away, which we all suffer with at some point or another. And then compulsively looking for a way out. So like compulsively doing breathing exercise, grounding techniques, distraction techniques that are used for short term, but then put into the long term. So a lot of these things like breathing, yoga, meditation, mindfulness, I've talked at these at nauseum. They can be really beneficial for the OCD recovery journey. The problem is when you're using them as a tool to escape how you're feeling. When you're using them as a tool to escape how you're feeling, that's when they become compulsive because that's what obsessive, whatever your obsessive fear is, intrusive thoughts, sensation, image, and then the compulsion, what you do to rid yourself of feeling that way, you just get stuck in the hamster wheel. So that's really key. Again, this doesn't mean you're not working on recovery, but the majority of the recovery is just letting things play out as you move throughout your day and start building perspectives over months, potentially a year, and seeing it's not as scary as you thought it was in the first place. So number two, anxiety loves avoidance. Embracing discomfort is the way forward. So huge compulsion for many and really correlated with low frustration tolerance. So avoidance is subtle. There's a lot of little subtle things that people do to avoid the way they're feeling, to avoid, you know, POCD, avoiding going by a school, harm OCD if it's self-harm, having the hiding the knives or driving down the street. 
or you know, false memory OCD, being afraid to drive down a street, or solipsism OCD, the fear of not looking at certain, you know, um, maybe uh, shows about the world ending and stuff like that. Daisy's barking at the door. Hold on one second. She's barking at the door. Okay, uh, 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 don't jump on the bed because the bed has my thing on. Just sit, just no. watch. They're gonna, here we go, here we go, here we go. There's one. Okay, sit down. Sit down. Don't you love when this happens when I'm making a video? Come here, come here, YouTube. This way. You're gonna knock my video over. Come on. Yes, go play. Go do your own thing. Sorry about that. But yeah, avoidance is really, really subtle and it could. And it go, go back in a lot of ways. All right, if you're gonna sit here, you gotta just sit here like this. Well, now they're both on the bed. Do you see that? You see what? You see what's happening here? This is what happens when Eric is not here. So, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make this a little bit easier. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull a rod, and I'm just gonna hold the phone while they look at them. Look at my tripod. They're like, nah, your tripod. Who needs that? So, that's what's really important about avoidance behaviors. Now, number three, which is down here, it's a huge quote. It says, I was trying to rid myself of how I felt instant, instantly. This is the problem. People want this dreadful thing gone right now, and understandably so. Understandably so. They want it gone right now. And one, they go from one treatment to another, and it's the opposite of what they should be doing. Now, we've all done this, especially when it comes to seeing that working on acceptance can actually really start to make you feel better. People can jump on acceptance and be like, oh, it's another tool to get me better right now when it's not. So, hey, 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 I'm making a video. I'm making a video. So, and that's really, really important to talk about because a lot of people do this and I did this, you know, jumping from one treatment to the other because we think acceptance is gonna be some miracle cure when it's not. It takes a little bit of time to like, you know, just actually start adopting the stuff. Come on, guys. Let's go. This way. You stay there. Come on. Now I got Milo gone and I just got Daisy in here. She's really scared because we're having a thunderstorm. So she sucks her tail under and she really just doesn't like that. So number four, recovery from anxiety is built on knowledge. So what I have written down right here is proactive and then the reading list and understanding that this takes time. This cannot be overlooked. This is super important because what happens is is if you don't truly understand how OCD works, it's really easy to get caught in the setback moments. And we've all gotten caught in those setback, setback moments. You get scared, you don't know what's going on, you don't fully understand OCD yet. So you're like, wait, is this a new theme? Is this a new fear? What's this new physical manifestation of anxiety? But now, like if I get like, like, you know, let's say one morning I wake up and I have a weird like, you know, just pulsating feeling in my face from muscle tension for like six hours, I'm not analyzing that because I don't care anymore. I just let it play out. That took me a long time to get to that. It's not gonna come overnight and it's really important to talk about that because a lot of people think it's just gonna go away immediately. So the last one, and there's only five on here, so it's gonna be a little bit shorter of a video, probably 10 minutes, but fear doesn't, I literally wrote fear doesn't anywhere. This is what happens, you know, when. You have no idea what's going on. Fear doesn't exist anywhere but within the mind. The outside is a reflection of your current mindset. Nothing on the planet is scary except our perspective of that. Even you could, you could put that into philosophy on the worst case scenario ever. Saying being tortured or something like that, it, like in the movie Hostel, Albert Ellis has talked about stuff like this, being you know violently kidnapped or murdered. He's talked about, it's not that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be in pain or wouldn't enjoy it, but you actually wouldn't need to see it as ho horrible. And that's so hard to fathom. A lot of people probably won't get on board with that, but it's just a way to look at it, just a perspective. But there is no fear in the outside. The outside is not fearful. So like that tree outside my window right now, you could have OCD about trees, a fear of being near trees. Well, that tree's not scary. It's my, it's my belief about the tree that's scary. I could have a fear that this cute face right here is gonna come after me. But pimples, a lot of people are scared of pimples because of things they hear about stories, and so they get scared of pimples. But the pimple's not scary, even if it's a vi more violent pimple, it's your belief about the pimple. So primary events, as I always talk about, your activating events do play into account to the individual. Sometimes they play a little bit more depending on the severity of say a trauma situation. If you were in something really horrific, like an explosion or something, that definitely does have merit. But the belief you're holding currently right now, that's the driving factor of why you see things the way you do. That is the absolute basis of REBT. 
So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was definitely a little bit off. It's a little bit later. I wasn't going to do it, but I, you know, I was like, you know, I, I didn't have any other work tonight. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to turn the camera on. I'm going to make a video. And I'm not going to plan for it too much because that's still a good little exposure for me because I definitely was a perfectionist in school. Um, really, really bad. You want to see? I'll show you. We'll end the video with this. This will be a really, really cool thing to see. So when I was in grad school, I'm going to show you what perfectionistic beliefs look like. Now, there's people that do this and they don't get by. Now, mind you, Cairo school was three and a half years. So past my, my bachelor's. <laughs> look at this. These are, so this is like literally three feet high. So these are all my notes. And these are, that's a really cool life magazine, by the way. But these are all of my notes from school. I had a notebook for every class that had to be brand new. I thought they had to be brand new. And all these crazy things about just like, I need to be so organized. Because I'm a pretty organized person. You know how people are like, oh, organization, OCD. We know that's not true. But yeah, this was, this was bad because this was certainty right here. This was me looking for certainty. And anytime you are looking for something, asking yourself if you're looking for certainty is really important in the OCD recovery journey. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different of a video. I kind of liked walking around a little bit and showing you some stuff. I might do a couple videos like this. If you like the format of this video, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know. I know a lot of people like the whiteboards. Uh, I know people like when I'm outside. I did a video today outside of the state park. It's so beautiful. Um, that's why I love living in Colorado. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. So thank you so much for watching. Don't for, uh, forget to subscribe down below and have a great day.